It's February 2023, and almost under the radar, Squarespace have launched a small but not insignificant feature. We now have section dividers that allow us to create seamless divides between sections of our Squarespace websites, allowing them to be more dynamic in nature and, without being dramatic, applying a little more energy to our pages. Today, we're going to have a look at this new feature and we're going to show how you can start using it from now to really bolster the look and feel of your websites. In the past, if you followed our tutorials, you'll know that we've found numerous workarounds to get this type of effect, but nothing is as clean or as simple or as free as this is along with your Squarespace subscription. We've used Spark plugin, fantastic, and it doesn't just do section dividers. We've used Canva. Now I can't overstate just how nice it is to have this feature built into Squarespace. It's about time guys, but thank you nonetheless. Let's crack on. If you want an instant 20% discount from your first monthly or annual Squarespace plan, we have left instructions in the description. It is both quick and easy to claim your discount at any time of the year. Enjoy. Here's a new template I'm working on at the moment, which will be going live on our Pixel Hay store. Little plug there. Hopefully the section divider will add some dynamism to this layout. Not sure yet because I haven't really had much more than a quick glance at the feature, but we'll find out in this tutorial. So let's click on edit to edit our page. And from here now, we should see the blue boxes appear. That means we're in edit mode. And then we're going to go to edit section. We can see under styling now, there's a new feature called divider. So if I was to select that, we can now see that there is a divider already in play. So that seems to be working. It's not the style I'm after. I'm after something a bit more edgy literally and we can see here now we've got some more options as well we've got the shape we've got stroke we've got the option to change the color which i believe is of the stroke let's have a look yes it is so we can do quite a few things here and also adjust the the thickness of that stroke as well we can change it to dotted or we can remove it entirely if i click on the settings we can now choose these preset styles if I choose randomized presets it's actually going with that main set but it's randomizing that particular style so it's changing the number of bumps that we have on there which is interesting this option here so if we randomize this one we can see it's still keeping that sharp jagged edge what's interesting is I wonder would it remember that? So if we were to try and reintegrate that into a separate section, so we have it matching, say, for example, in the hero unit of every page, we have that cut off at the bottom. I don't know, but we'll find out later on. So that seems to use the same effect. When I go through there, but what's quite interesting is if I choose a circular divider or a, a rounded divider, it will choose rounded random presets. You can also change the, the width of them as well. So this is probably where we keep the same effect going through. So say for example, I want to go for small width, medium width, large width, and then adjust the height. So again, medium height. I don't want it to be overly dramatic, but just having that cut off there. So we just remember the settings we've gone for now. The offset will give us an edge. So we could create a really nice effect here where it cuts in and then shows a little bit more of the header. But this time I think we're going to go with a simple setting where we don't have an offset. So actually we drag it to the middle for that. So we want an offset of zero pixels. At this stage, I remember the settings because I want to add this elsewhere within the site. So we're choosing the angular preset. We're going to go with large width, medium height, and no additional settings. We can also obviously flip it here as well if we wanted to. But I'm going to keep them all going on that angle, I think. Save at this point. 
and we're going to do the same with this section here. I activate the divider feature, click on settings, large and medium, I believe. Go back, we're going to remove the stroke. And that feature is enabled. The one problem we've got with this combining the divider with, say, for example, the background animations that we've got here is that the two don't work together. But for me, I'd rather prioritize the divider. At this point, it's just a case of removing that feature. I believe you'll have the same problem if you had a background video as well. It uh, very cleverly matches up the color of the section above with the background color of the section below. So I'm going to save it at that point, but we can see that the image isn't quite working. I know why. We've got a issue where this isn't a background image. It's an image that's got multiple layers over top to get this type of effect where we've got overlapping layers using the Fluid Engine. So this is essentially an image added into the page, snapped to full width. We can see I can actually bring it back in what's happening is because it's not a background image we're not getting the image itself to go down to this divider so the workaround for this would be to drop it into canva or photoshop and add a gradient at the bottom so it blends into that background color meaning that when we get to this stage we've got that angled effect and it's still working that's the theory anyway i think that's his own little video that i can create to show you how i do that then when we go to the bottom of this section as well, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add a divider in here, and I'm interested to see how it works with that map. So already we're finding trade-offs to use a divider. We might have to simplify the design elsewhere. So again, same settings, and we can see now that the map isn't going up to the full height of that section. Remove the line, even though it's white and it's matching that, the position of the starting point of the dividers will be slightly different. It's not a major problem if you don't quite get that fixed. Okay. So the other final trade-off I'm going to make here is just to make this map so it doesn't snap to the full size. Make it deliberate that it's not designed to be full width. So I'm going to go out to the edge of the container, not stretch it to full screen. And that means that it just looks more natural in that position. So we lose that full map effect because the divider and the map, it's just not dynamic enough to, to work together. It certainly hasn't dampened my spirits about the feature and what it can do for a number of our designs. It's been a little bit quirky at the moment. I can't select the edit section, so I'm just going to press done. Give it a quick refresh if this happens to you. Head back down then, press edit again. We're going to edit the footer. For some reason it's not letting me edit the bottom section of the footer. But we should be able to edit it on this one anyway. So I select divider. Actually, this is the one I want to edit anyway, so we're fine. Same settings once again. And we're ready to put our copyright notice and terms and conditions link, etc. in that footer. I'm just going to scroll through smoothly now just so we can see and have a good preview of how this website looks with this new effect. So we can see it's adding a really nice effect there. If I can 
just edit the bottom of that image so it blends to that solid color. That will provide a really nice feature. My Squarespace and Canva course is not completely redundant, which is, I suppose, good news. There we go. Really nice effect. Have a play. Please leave some comments with your own challenges and results that you've had with using this quite cool new feature. Catch you next time.